This is the disassembly for the 8849 Tank 2 by Unihertz. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure you subscribe and follow me on Twitter so you'll be notified once I upload a new video. And if you need any tools, there are links in the description. Before taking it apart, I just wanted to show a few key features of this phone. It has an emergency light feature, which lights up red and blue on the back of the device very brightly. It also has a cool built-in projector, which lets you project what you see on your screen to any surface. Now let's get back to the teardown. To start off, the SIM tray needs to be removed. Here's a better look at that. There are 14 T6 or Torx 6 screws on the back that need to be removed. Here's a better look at the aluminum, plastic, and rubber back cover. The flex cable for the NFC antenna is located around the border of this plastic cover for the light. And if you needed to replace the glass camera lens cover, you just need to apply some heat and gently pry it off. So you wouldn't need to disassemble the phone to replace that cover. Now the camping light assembly needs to be pried off and lifted over. Now there are 16 Phillips screws which need to be removed. The battery cables can now be disconnected, followed by the rest of the cables. The night vision lights are located on this plastic cover, as well as the loudspeaker. On the top plastic cover, there are some antenna lines drawn, which are light gray color lines. And the dual LED flash and the dual back microphones are located here. The coaxial cable on the bottom right side of the board can be disconnected by popping it off. There are also some antenna lines drawn on the bottom plastic cover. To remove the battery, there's an adhesive pouch provided to help you pry it off. Here's a better look at the 15,500 mAh battery, which is basically three 5,166 mAh batteries put together to operate as one. If you needed to replace the screen, you need to remove the screws on the back cover, as well as the cover itself, and then lift up the camping light assembly, and remove the screws on the top plastic cover, as well as the bottom, and remove those covers. You would then have to disconnect the battery cable, the screen cable, and the cables leading to the subboard, 
and pry the battery off, giving you access to the screen cable, which is routed through an opening in the midframe, at which point you can heat up the front of the phone where the screen is to loosen up the adhesive underneath, pry the old screen off, apply new adhesive, and reapply the new screen making sure you run the flex cable back to the opening in the midframe, and reassemble the phone. There are three Phillips screws holding on the main board. Looking at the main board, there's a 108 megapixel primary camera, as well as a 64 megapixel night vision camera, and a 16 megapixel ultra wide. None of the cameras have OIS or optical image stabilization. The camera connectors can be disconnected by just popping them off. There's also some copper tape over the front shields to help transfer heat. Looking at the other side, we can see thermal pads on top of all the chips, as well as the RAM and processor. Now these three flex cables need to be peeled off. There are seven more Phillips screws that have to be removed. The infrared or IR blaster is located on this metal plate. Two additional Phillips screws need to be removed. Here's a better look at the controller board for the laser projector, as well as the projector itself. The projector is connected via two flex cables to this board, and it's also held in place with one Phillips screw. The LED flash is also located on this board. There are six Phillips screws which are holding on the SIM reader board, as well as the flex cable for the earpiece speaker. Here's a better look at that. And here's a look at the 32 megapixel front facing camera. The vibrator motor is located here and it's held down with some adhesive. This is the flex cable for the earpiece speaker. So these two gold contacts touch the contacts on the earpiece speaker to give it signal. And this flex cable goes for the proximity sensor. This flex cable is for the volume keys on this side. And this one's for the buttons below that. And these two flex cables are for the fingerprint reader and the power button. There are two Phillips screws which are holding on the subboard. So looking at the subboard, we can see the headphone jack connected over here, and the charger port is located here. Both the charger port and headphone jack have rubber gaskets around it. Here's a look at the other side. And finally, we can see the flex cable for the primary microphone, which is held in place with a cure-in-place gasket. For the repairability score on this phone, I give it a 5.5 out of 10. Now it's time to reassemble the phone.
Once everything's back in place, flip over the phone, power it on, and you're done. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.